Good morning and welcome to Glasgow Science Centre's Curious About Innovation Digital Science Festival. Today we are joined by Sam and Alan from Morrison Construction who are going to be talking to us about innovation within the construction industry. After their presentation, you can ask any questions you want to about Sam and Alan's career or their experiences. So please leave all comments in the YouTube live stream and we'll hopefully get around to as many as we can after the presentation. But for now, I'm going to hand you over to Alan. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Alan Smith and we're going to be talking about the um, presentation here on um, innovation in construction and how, how we are using um, innovation and digital tools to, to address the, the issues um, surrounding climate change in the, in the industry at the moment. Um, so on the next slide, can we can we see this slide? Ah, here we go. Yeah, so uh, as I say, on, on the next slide is, is the agenda that, that we're looking at. Um, uh, is that on the next one? There we go. Um, yeah, next slide. So yeah, I'm, I'm Alan Smith. I'm the, the low carbon manager for, for Morrison Construction. Um, so before we start, just a, a small bit about um, my, my career pathway to, to where, where I'm, I'm working today. Um, so I, I started my career after school. Um, I studied architecture in, in university up, up in Aberdeen. Um, and, and following uh, the first three years, we had a year out. And, uh, and growing up, my, my favourite film was uh, Coming to America. Um, and I used to watch Friends all the time. So um, I, uh, I worked in New York for a year. Uh, and I think the, the, the sequel to, to Coming to America came out a couple of months ago and it was disappointingly terrible. Um, but that, uh, that, that photo there was uh, a view from a desk um, in New York. So it was, a, it was an amazing experience. Um, and then I was back to Scotland for a couple of years to finish my, my degree. Um, and then my next favourite film was, was uh, Crocodile Dundee um, set in Australia. So um, I decided to spend a year working in Australia, uh, spent a year traveling and working, using the skills that I'd got to, to work in architectural offices um, in Sydney, Melbourne and, and Perth. Um, and then back to back to Scotland, I, I finished my degree and, and qualified as, as an architect. Um, and then from there, um, I worked for uh, for eight years and then I went back to university to do a, a master's degree in project management. Um, so I worked as a project manager. Um, and then from there, I, I became a senior design manager at my current company at Morrison Construction. Um, and I've just very recently uh, become a low carbon manager. Um, so the the issue in the industry at the moment, so in terms of um, global warming and climate change, the, the construct, construction industry um, collectively accounts for almost 40% of, of global global carbon emissions, which is one of the key contributors to, to climate change. Um, and, and and as Greta, um, you know, there she's one of the, the, the main pioneers of, um, you know, make, making sure that we're we're finding solutions to address climate change. Um, and on the next slide as well, um, a, a couple of years ago, um, I think inspired by Greta, there was there was marches all across um, across Scotland and, and the UK with the the school kids uh, marching and demanding change. Um, so I think we've we've really got to to respond to that. I don't think you're going to let us off the hook anytime soon. Um, so so the, the current target is is 2045 in Scotland um, to get to, to net zero carbon, um, which is effectively meaning. Um, uh, reducing and um, negating the, the amount of carbon that, that we produce and, and carbon is effectively the, the byproduct of burning uh, burning fossil fuels um, and there, there's a big big conference here at, at, uh, in November where, where all the world leaders are going to come together and um, and discuss the issue. Um, so next slide please Sam. So in the construction industry where, where all the carbon comes from and, and why it's such a big issue is Basically, everything you see, every building, all, all the roads, all, all the cars, and um, you know they, they have to be built by something, whether it's steel, um, concrete, or, or timber. And um, in, in terms of mining and um, producing that, it comes from factories. You use a lot of energy to produce these materials. Um, so that, that burns fossil fuels, and, and that produces a lot of carbon. Um, wh when we build buildings, we, um, we, we use machines to build buildings, we use cranes, uh, we use a lot of energy building buildings, so that all produces carbon. Um, but also when, when we're in buildings, um, living in buildings, turning the heating on, um, um, run, running appliances, you know, just, just any anything that you do when you, you, you turn the socket on or turn the heating on, that produces carbon as well. So collectively, there, there's a huge amount of, of carbon that is produced in the industry. Um, and the, the, the challenge is to, you know, how do we 
innovate now to to reduce the the, the carbons and uh, carbon emissions in the in the construction industry. So uh, I'll go back to, to Greta to to try and demonstrate this. What what one of the main examples is is that in in a building if or if if you're if you go outside and it's cold, and you don't have a particularly warm jacket on, you you get cold. Or or if you've got a jacket on and it's not zipped up, and um, the cold gets in and you know you get cold as well. Um, and, and that's really what's happening with buildings at the moment. They're they're not insulated enough. They've not got a warm enough jacket on. And if you you know you might have windows or doors that if you put your hand on it, you, you would feel that the, the draft coming in um, through the windows, through the doors. Um, so buildings you know are, are quite leaky. And if if the cold is getting in and it's um, it's cold, you need to turn the heating on um, to 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 compensate for that. Um, and that that heating in turn is is burning fossil fuel and burning carbon and you know creating a lot of, of energy to do it. Um, so the 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 real simple solution that we've got at the moment is to to make buildings a, a lot warmer. And uh, as as Greta is here, she's got a nice warm hat on. She's got a nice warm scarf on and, and a warm jacket. And if you apply that to to buildings, if if you put an, a a warmer jacket on the building zip the jacket up so that the heat doesn't get in and doesn't get out and um, you're not um, you're not using so much energy to heat up and in you know in, in your case if you've got a, a warm jacket and a warm hat on it's it's not the the hat that's keeping you warm it's it's your, it's your body body heat that is just not escaping um from your body it's it's just reflecting back into yourself so that that's really what what we're trying to do at the moment is to try and make buildings as as efficient as possible so that when when you're in buildings, the, the, the heat from your your body effectively um, contributes to heating up uh, the building, and, and we're, we're not relying on um, having to, to turn heating on all, all the time and um, burn so much energy. Um, so so that that's the that's the kind of real basic element of it. And we've just finished a, a building in the, in West Lothian uh, Council called, a, and it's called a passive house. Um, and passive house is it's it's a very ultra low energy building standard that uh, you know means that w when you when you build a building to that standard it um, it, it means it runs on a very very low um, low energy uh, very low running costs um, and so if you click onto the next slide Sam so th this is a this is a quick tour so we, we use 360 degree photography to to capture this building and, and this has been great especially in the last year when We've not really been able to get out to sites very much. It's allowed people to, you know, clients and um, people who've been working on the building or people who want to visit to to come in and have a vir virtual tour of the building while it's being built. And th there's a QR code um, on the bottom right there. So if you if you scan that QR code, you'll be able to get access to this building. And as you see, I'm, I'm clicking through there. So there's there's a photo in every room. Um, on a weekly basis of the build, um, so so you'll see here the the building when the the, the timber frame is just going up, um, and then that's that's the roof on just now. So if, if you if you click on that link, and I think it'll be available after this as well, um, you, you'll be able to go in and, and have a look at your leisure around this building. Um, so so that um, that foil there, that that's the it's called the airtight layer, and, and that's what really keeps all the air in the building and, and keeps it keeps it nice and warm. Um, and then this is just as the building is getting um, further towards the end. Um, so, so yeah, for, from from a from a practical perspective, that's what we're really trying to do at the moment with, with buildings is just try and make them as as efficient as possible, um, which which is going to help um, reduce uh, reduce the energy down. Um, and I'm going to pass you over to to Sam, who's going to take you through all the the digital tools that, that we're using to to try and help help that um, along the way. Hi everyone, um, my name is Samantha Sweeney and I am a Graduate Design Manager with Morrison Construction. So I'll start off today with a wee bit about my career. So it's nowhere near as exciting as what Ireland has been, albeit it's a bit shorter. So I started, I went to school in Glasgow, grew up in Glasgow, went to high school in Glasgow. And then I moved through to Edinburgh, lived there for six years and went to uni there. So I went to Harry Watt University, studied architectural engineering for two years and the course wasn't for me. Um, so I made the decision to, to swap courses and start again. So I then moved into four years of construction project management, loved the course, was so much better, was so much, much of a better fit. Then I graduated and I am with Morris Construction. So I've been in my current role now for just two years this month, actually. Um, and it's great. I love it. 
So start off today with um, how we use these um, simple model viewers to, to build buildings, essentially. So here we've got one of the projects that I am working on at the moment. So here each designer is responsible for their own model. So here we can see the steel model here, and then you've got the mechanical and electrical model that you can load in. You've got the precast concrete model that you can load in and the architect's model. So each of these models, the, arch the, the designers are responsible for it and we load them into a software called Dalux so that we can view them all at the same time and you get a real feel for how the building really looks. So we can take a wee walk through here and then you can load in the interior design model which shows all the, the furniture. And you, you get a really good feel for how the building is going to look. So we use this here on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, our building will look hopefully exactly the same as what it looks in the model. We use it with client engagement. So the client really knows what they're getting, what their end product's going to be. It's really good for placing furniture so that we don't clash with power sockets or M&E &E items. Just go through here. So we can also use it on site to use it with, we can take measurements. So here you can take a quick measurement of a ceiling height, stops you going through thousands and thousands of drawings. You've often found the projects as big as this. You do end up with an abundance of drawings, which can be quite difficult to find your way through. So the model really helps with that. You can also cut through the building, see different sections. And then if you zoom in, you can actually take each item within the building as, as tagged with their own properties. So when we hand this over to the client at, um, at completion, it's got everything that they've got in their building. So for maintenance, um, if anything goes wrong, if anything needs fixed, they can just pop into the model, see exactly the, the make and model of what they've got in there, and then access the, the operations and maintenance manual so that they, they know how to fix it, really. You can also cut through the building in terms of floor plans and you can load drawings into it, which again, really, really handy if you need a drawing quite quickly or if you just need to see floor plans within the model. I'll come on to chat a wee bit about how we use this on site and how we've got this, um, how our sort of construction managers are using it on site too. So here's a bit, a bit of an example on how we use this. So this bottom picture here is a photograph of what it looks like on site as of Monday. And that top photograph is what it looks like in the model. So you can already see there that it's really coming into shape. Um, so we use this um, from concept to design to handover. Um, like I said, it solves any clashes and it allows us to prefabricate more material. Um, so and allow for easy install, which means less waste. So we actually used the model in one of our projects to be able to model services through steel so that when the steel was being fab made on site, the, the holes were pre-cut, which means we didn't have to do it on site, which was great. Another feature that we're using, as Alan touched on, is 360 degree photographs. Um, in this example here, although we can compare photographs against photographs and what they look like on a week-to-week -week basis, we can also go in and compare the photograph against the model so we can see that everything's in the right place and um, dead easy to see if anything's been installed incorrectly or if anything um, isn't the right thing that's installed so you can go through and you can hide different parts of the building so when we go in to start doing the M&E we'll be able to see exactly where everything is and again make sure everything's um, been installed correctly and verify install um, which makes our QSEs very happy. All right. Again, this is how we use Galax on site. So we have it installed on all of our smartphones and all of our tablets on site. So this wee video here is how it looks on, on an iPhone. So you can take the floor plan and then click exactly where you are in the building and then walk yourself through it. So again, we use this day to day, dead, dead, dead easy to see um, what's actually been installed on site. So we had an instance where um, steel was actually installed upside down um, for one of our partitions. And um, you could just literally go into the model on your phone and check what way that steel was installed instead of having to go up to the office, find a drawing, potentially find more than one drawing um, and probably take about half an hour out of your day. So it's dead easy to just do it, it takes five minutes. Again, you can see exactly that everything's geotagged with what, what it actually is. So you can check the, the make and model and the specification of every item. Another really, really cool feature that we've actually got is 
augmented reality within Dalax. So here is what you can see from a phone. If you line the models up and you can really walk through the building and see where all the furniture is going to place to be placed. So we use this for a lot of client engagement. So they, they love it and it's great for it's such a primary school. So for the kids to actually get, get to see what their spaces are going to look like. It's also really good for the teachers. They can start planning out their rooms because um, they know exactly what furniture is going to be in the rooms and exactly how it's going to feel really. Playing. So that's the toilets there. And then we'll walk into another classroom and let you see. So you can do this all the way through the building. Again, digital construction wise, um, we use this at um, sort of concept design with our interior designer. So this was a video that was created um, to show to show everybody how, how the building was going to look. So it will take you a, a walk through. So that's the dining hall that I'd showed you earlier. So that's how it will look when it's finished. And then it takes you into the GP space. So that, that video there has all the finishes. So that's how everything will look color-wise, um, size-wise. So it's really good, again, for the client. It's really, really good to pick colors when we were doing the interior design strategy. Again, reduces waste. It means people know exactly what they're getting. Um, and they, they, they can pick colors. So really, with everything we've showed you today, um, there's quite a lot of um, similarities between what we're doing within the construction industry and what's actually been doing in the sort of gaming industry. So really, do you think that, that what you're doing, um, if you're playing Xbox or PS4s, I'm not too sure what everyone's playing just now, um, you could have the skill set that we already need um, within the industry? All right. Could take any questions or anything you need now? really interesting that was way more fancy than what I thought it was going to be um so yeah we'll go straight into some questions just now so let's see what we have so far um so how long did it take you to learn the software that you use to plan the construction of these buildings um I, I'll answer that question from a, a designer's perspective with a, an architectural background the the, the the software that we use is it, it's called um, Revit, which is you you design the buildings in in three D. It used to be two D, and when I very first started out, it was actually on um, on pen and paper, and um, which seems a long time ago now, right enough. Um, but yeah, the to, to learn Revit is th there's a bit of a learning curve there, but uh, I, th I think what, what we generally tend to find is that the the, the younger um, employees who are, who are coming through who maybe have that more more of a technical um, background from I, I guess just you know just the the, the, the digital world that, that we live in at the moment they pick up very very quickly. Um, so not I don't really have a time scale as such, but it, it is very intuitive and it, and it gets a lot more intuitive um, as, as we go along. And, and Sam, you might want to comment from the from the site side of things as well. Yeah, so from, from site side of things and, and the Dalux model that I showed you this morning, I'll use the example of, of one of our um, project managers who still has a Nokia phone. He is not into not into technology at all. When this first came out, he was like, what is this? We'll just keep doing it the way we've been doing it for the last 20 odd years. And now he probably uses it the most. Um, it's really user friendly. Um, so it's dead easy. There's not too much you can do on it. Um, but you can scoot around the model, cut and measure and things like that. So from that point of view, I would say a couple hours, really. Um, and then we use it day to day. So it's second nature to us now. So, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I think if I was using that augmented reality, I would probably try and sit on one of those chairs and make a fool of myself. Um, next question is, what is the most exciting thing about your job? I'll take yeah, I'll take one of those. From, for me at the moment, um, it's getting to that completion. So we are quite close to completion in one of the projects I am just now, um, and I've been with it right from the very start. So so going from seeing foundations going and steel going up to now, 
walls are painted, furniture is going in, and it's how we've created that. Really, that was that's the best part of my job, I think. Yeah, from me, um, just just in my you know relatively new role of of um, low carbon manager, and you know as I touched upon in the slides, I, I think it's it's realizing that you're part of a a wider um, a wider goal. Um, you know, to, to help help climate change, um, and you know everything is is going towards that. Traditionally, we used to build buildings as as one offs, and you know you, you go in, you build it, and then then you leave, and then you know that's you done. But but now the the way it's all set up is that you know we, we've got to build buildings that are um, very ener energy efficient, and you know towards that goal of the the, the twenty forty five net zero carbon target. So I think just 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 feeling like you are part of a a very long-term strategy to to obviously tackle a, a global problem is uh, you know is, is a good is a good feeling and um, it's it's a, it's an exciting challenge to be to be in the middle of. Amazing, thank you. Let's see if we've got another question there for you. Okay, what does a day at your job look like? That's quite a tricky one. Go on, Sam. Yeah, I'll go over that one. So I'm I'm on site just now, um, so every day is probably different. Um, Right now, you're probably normal day, getting about eight o'clock. You've normally got a couple of meetings in the morning, which is all on teams at the moment. Um, normally get out to site in the afternoon, see what's going on. Um, normally quite have a site visits with the, the other construction managers or sometimes the clients out. So you get out, sort of see what's going on out there, see if there's anything that, that needs resolved from a design perspective. Um, and then, yeah, draw on reviews, which is always a joy. Yeah, for me, it's it's relatively similar to Sam, and because we work across multiple projects, no no day is the same, or no two days are, are the same. Um, at at the moment, you know, there there is a lot of time spent at the computer, but but hopefully, you know, that will that will ease off a little bit, and we can you know have meetings face to face. Um, and and there are a lot of meetings as well, which is, um, which is a requirement, but. You know, as Sam says, getting out on site, seeing how, how buildings are put together, or if we're working in, in the design stage, having a lot lots of meetings, just talking about how how the buildings go together and, and how we can how we can do things better. Um, so yeah, very very varied. Really, that there are you know literally no two days the same, which is which is very which is very nice. Fantastic. Thank you. Remember, if you have any questions for uh, Sam and Alan, please post them in the chat, and we will uh, get to them as fast as we can. But let's get another question for now. Um, what is the biggest challenge you have had to solve during a build? Yeah, so you, you might you might remember a few years ago, the, the, the tower down in London, um, the Grenfell, which which went on fire. Um, and, and that was because of the the, the, the cladding was was combustible, which which means it, it went on fire um, very easily. And it, it, as soon as that happened, there was a lot of questions asked about all all the buildings that we built or or, or all the buildings that we we were building and are, are building at the time. Um, so we, we had to we had to very quickly respond to that to make sure that the buildings that we had built were were safe, and the, the buildings that we 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 were building are are equally safe as well. So um, that that was a real real big challenge, and it was you know obviously a very um, a very important one as well that we had to to respond to very quickly, um, to to make sure that that what um, what we were building what was safe and that there wouldn't be any any danger to the to the people who were were occupying them and that that were were going to be occupying them. So and and that that's still uh, still an issue that's that's going on at the moment to to make sure that the the materials that we use and um, the, the the way the materials go together are are as safe as safe as they can be. Yeah, I can imagine that would be a sort of continuing thing that you keep having to do and go back to to make sure that everything that you do and have done is as safe as you can possibly make it. That's Absolutely. amazing. Thank you. Uh, our next question, let's have a look at that one. What is the most unusual feature a customer has wanted to be added to their building? Sam looks like she has an answer for that one. Um, so actually on the project that we're on just now, there's obviously a big push for having buildings that are low carbon and eco-friendly. So we actually have living walls and, and living lights within the building. So the the walls are all planting and the lights are a sort of basically a big massive circular ring light um, with moss in the middle and the moss is living, breathing, all alive. So, so yeah, we've got that and then we've had a couple of requests for trees within the building as well, which is always very interesting. So yeah, quite cool stuff. 
Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we've got a bio wall here at the Science Centre and that's always good fun. There's always inter interesting things living in the bio wall. Um, so that's de definitely got challenges in itself. Um, do we have another question coming up? Okay, we have a question here from Stephen Hill via YouTube. Uh, what building materials are most difficult to dispose of responsibly? Um, yeah, so uh, the, the the big one, um, well, I guess it's ongoing at the moment, is it was asbestos that uh, that was you know quite commonly used in the um, in the the fifties, sixties, and seventies, and, 70s, and you know, it's it's an ongoing. Um, action now for, for buildings which are which are of that that age that um, you know we have to get rid of the asbestos in in those buildings and they they have to be obviously very carefully disposed of due to their their harmful nature so that that's probably the the, the key one from a from a health and safety perspective um but but what we're, what we're trying to do um is part of the the low carbon push is to it's called circular economy where where we, we we do reuse buildings um, or, or materials that if we take down buildings, if we take down a, um, a building that has lots of, of brick or, or stone in it, for example, that we don't just throw away those bricks and um, we, we find a way to, to reuse them. Um, st steel buildings, it's, it's probably a bit harder to, to reuse steel. Um, but, but again, it's, it's tr just trying to understand whether we need to take down buildings or you know, ca can we reuse them? Because it's, you know, reusing a building makes a lot lot it takes a lot less energy to reuse a building than it is to construct it to, to construct one from new. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's it's just trying to understand what what materials we can reuse rather than, than dispose is the is is the big um, big challenge at the moment. That sounds brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have another question? Uh, what is it like being a female working in the construction industry? I'm assuming that's for yourself, Sam. Yeah, it's a question that's asked quite often. Do you know what? It's it's fine. It's it's not as it's not as scary as as what people make it out to be. Um, on the site we're working on just now, there's there's four girls uh, between maybe twelve of twelve men. So it's getting there. There there's definitely more kind of people, more females coming up and coming. But yeah, it's not as it's not as I don't feel it's as prevalent. Everyone's very professional. Everyone's lovely. It's not like you're walking into a room of scary men so yeah it's fine it's fine and there's definitely more of us so power in numbers that's always reassuring definitely and if it's making sort of trends in a positive direction then that's always good thank you definitely uh let's get another question can an existing building be made into a passive building um yes yes it can the um that, that's one of the big um big items that we're looking at at the moment and i know a lot of clients are looking at it as well it's to because if you've got um say schools at the moment or, or universities that have a, have a large um, estate of buildings that they they need to get themselves um more energy efficient to, to meet the 2045 target so so there's a lot of people looking at how they can um modify their buildings to, to make them make them passive buildings or you know operate at that very very low energy um so there, there's a a standard called Enerfit, uh, which is the passive house standard for um, for existing buildings, um, and that that involves things like you know changing the glazing to to triple glaze triple glazing in the windows as opposed to maybe single or double glazing, which is there at the moment. Um, maybe taking out the the old insulation that's there and, and putting in a lot more insulation, um, and just make, making sure that the there's no big air leaks around the, around the windows or doors or, or, or in the roof itself. So, so yeah, yes, you can. It's, it's probably a little bit trickier given the fact that you've got to get in about all the nooks and crannies of the building to, um, to get it to work. But um, yes, there's a, there's, a, there's a huge amount of buildings that are, that are currently looking at that at the moment. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's really interesting. Uh, let's get another one. Uh, can you tell us what it was like building the Queen's Ferry Crossing? Um, neither Sam or I worked on that no. personally ourselves, but um, yeah, no, our, our company was was involved in the in the infrastructure side of that. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a great great project for for our company to to be involved in um, such a um, such a national 
um, project, and th there was a lot of tours of the of the site, getting right up to the, the top of the cranes, and um, you know, seeing seeing the seeing the view over to Fife and, and Edinburgh from from the top of the towers. Um, so so yeah, th th these are the kind of projects that are really exciting to work on. Um, and in fact, one of Sam's um, colleagues who who sits in the same room as Sam um, worked on it. Stephen, who was um, who was a graduate design manager, just um, just like Sam a few years ago, he, he worked on that for. Uh, I think five years while he was yeah. doing his degree, he was yeah. he was doing a he was doing a part time degree, and um, while he was working part time on the Queen's Free Crossing, um, so he's he's got some great stories and, and great experience from from working in that, um, and and as I say, he, he went he went straight onto that from uh, from his college degree. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's really good to know. I bet it had a lot of interesting challenges to it that had to be solved. Yeah. Uh, right, so let's get our next question. What do you think about 3D printed or laser cut buildings or building components? I th I think they're great. Um, I haven't quite worked with any um, as of yet. Um, I think maybe the UK is a little bit more behind on the 3D laser printing compared to sort of say China. Um, but yeah, I think they're, they're great. They, they reduce time and, and waste and all sorts. So yeah, I think they're, they're really good. I think we'll probably see a couple of them in, in the coming years. Yeah, that would be really interesting to see how you can take the sort of digital models that you've been showing yeah. us today and putting them into these sort of 3D modelling uh, issues. Yeah, def definitely the way things are going. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Let's see what we've got next. How has construction technology changed over the time that you've been working in the industry? So I suppose that's a question for both of you to answer. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe take that from um, from the first. Uh, so I, I started um, my, my first year out when I worked um, or when I started university in 1997, it was. And so our architecture degree was was on drawing boards and and using pen and pencil, um, and I did that for for three years for my degree, um, and it was just when I when I had my first year out when when I worked in America, that um, I started working in computers at the time, and it was all all two D drawings, um, that were there, and so you had to you know every single drawing that you had was, um, in in two D, and then. You know, fast forward to what what you've seen now with with augmented reality and three D models and you know, just everything you can do on your your phone or your your laptop, it just seems a you know a, a quantum leap in, in terms of technology and and that was only, I mean, you're really only twenty years ago um, to to when we were you know really just starting to use the the two D systems. So, you know, it it does make you wonder what it's going to be like in in twenty years time. Or you know, even five years time, it's just going going so fast. And you know, Sam, you've probably seen it even yourself yeah. just in the short time. Yeah. So I've I've been in my career for two years, and even in that two years, like we didn't we didn't use Dalux when I first started with the company, and now it's getting rolled out across across everywhere because everyone's just realised how 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 good it is and how easy it makes our job. Well, yeah. Um, and even from when I was at university, um, things have come on so much more from there's things that we're doing now that, that I just weren't taught because they didn't exist sort of four or five years ago, which is which is brilliant to see. Um, again, it makes our day to day life slightly easier than drawing thousands and thousands of drawings. Um, that almost sounds like the best sort of thing that's happened since you started, Alan, is possibly copy and paste then. I imagine that saves you quite a lot of time. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. That was the first thing I learned when I was using the computers, copy and paste. Yeah, it saves, saves, yeah. You, saves you a lot of time, yeah. All right. Um, do we have another question here? Uh, so what other skills are important for you doing your job? I would say probably the most important skill in my job is is IT, IT skills and communication. Um, we use Dalux, we use uh, Excel, Word, everything, as long as you're sort of up to date with with what you can do on a computer you can really go anywhere and I think that's the same for for most jobs to be fair um and then just communication uh, communication is key we wouldn't get anywhere we wouldn't be able to build buildings without talking to each other um so yeah I think those two skills are probably the most important and you'll probably hear that all the time you'll probably hear that for every job but it, it really is too yeah absolutely because the on on the 
well, on the jobs, uh, job Sam was working on that you saw the videos for, there, there, there's a huge amount of people working on that. There, yeah. There's architects, structural engineers, mechanical engineers, um, acoustic engineers, fire consultants, clients. So, you know, over the course of a job, you know, there's there, there's tens, if not hundreds of people. Um, and in, in our role in, in the design um, in the design side, you know, we, we've really got to try and coordinate that and, and make sure all, all that information comes together and um, it, it can be built um, or, or the company can build it and it, it can go together. So just ha having having that communication skill as well is very important and, you know, being able to, um, uh, yeah, I guess be be uh, be friendly to people and, you know, because everybody's, it, certainly in the last year, everybody's had lots of issues to deal with as well and people are, are working at different paces now. So, um, yeah, just, just having that kind of soft, softer side of um, the skills is, is very important as well, just to, um, you know, get everybody working together. Uh, that was a really good detailed answer. Thank you very much, both of you. Uh, let's see if we have another question here. What advice would you give to young people wanting to start a career in the construction industry? Um, I'll take that one. Look at your options. Um, I would say so. There's not there's not any one way to get into the construction industry. Um, we've got directors in our company who didn't go to uni and they started on the tools. We've got directors who went to uni and um, took some time out. And we've also got people who, who went to college, done part-time education, went to uni, done part-time education. There's apprenticeships. Um, there's really there's really not one way to go. Um, there's so many options. So I would definitely say research your options. If you can get any contacts, get contacts if there's any internships going, but really just grab every opportunity you can. Um, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I definitely um, ag agree with that. And, and you know, as you saw with those videos, that you know, th there are people now who work in the construction industry who probably don't even set foot on a construction site. You know, it's um, there's a lot of people who who work work just exclusively with with computers. You know, working on the on the digital side of things and on on the design side. So, you've got that side, and then you've got you've got the physical construction side of things as well. So, th there are two um, or you know, there's almost the, the two polar opposites of, of the, the type of industry that you, you could go into. And, you know, the construction industry kind of um, caters for, for everything in between there as well. And, you know, as I kind of touched upon with, with the, the targets for the, um, the the net zero carbon, that's 2045, which will conveniently be when I when I retire probably. Um, but th there's, a, there's a long, long time and a, a lot of work to do to, to get there. So it's, uh, it's quite a... You know, it's quite an exciting industry to get into. I think, and there, there's going to be a, a lot of work over over the next period to to try and you know face all these challenges to to, to get us to that target. Yeah, I would also just add to that. Sorry, I would also say that the also look at options of of job roles because within the construction industry, I mean, we have accountants, we have lawyers, we have people that work in admin, we have planners, um, estimators. It's not just builders. There's so much more. Um, we've got people that work in social media. Um, there's everything. Um, you pretty much any job that you can imagine. We probably have. We employ someone like that. So yeah. Absolutely. It sounds like there is something in the construction industry for everybody. So what you're saying is everybody should just go into construction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay. I hey, think please. we have just a couple more questions before we bring up that last slide that we've got to look at. Um, so why is construction interesting in terms of innovation? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's, well, it's it's like a lot of industries at, at the moment where with the with, with the digital world, it, it is allowing us to innovate a lot, a lot, to, a lot more and, and a lot quicker as well. And if if you look at buildings in 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 the Middle East, for example, you know there's, there's a race to to make the the, the, the tallest building in, in the world, and you, you probably couldn't have done that 20 years ago just w without the, the the technology that you had. And you know, using things like the, the 3D printer that, that that we touched upon as well. That, that really opens up opportunities to, to build buildings that we, we, we physically couldn't have done um, probably even five five or ten years ago. Um, so that the, the technology that is either available now or, or will be available in five, ten years' time will will probably allow us to build buildings that we, we can't even imagine at, at the moment. So um, it's probably quite exciting to, you know, to, to think that we, we don't even have the technology now for the buildings that we'll build in, in, in 10 years. And yeah, it'll be exciting to see what that, that is going to look like. 
Fantastic. Thank you. It does sound like you're all very competitive and like to have, you know, the tallest type of every type of building. You like getting your human, world human record. Nature. Yeah. yeah. All right. We have one last question here. So let's see what it is. Uh, what further innovations does the future of construction hold? So if you could imagine an innovation that the, might be maybe in the near future or the far future, what could it possibly be? Guys, on it. Well, yeah. maybe building in the sky is actually the future. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think things like nanotechnology and and again going back to that that three D printer, it's you know build, building things in you know, pr probably in, in remote areas as well, um, in, in in areas which are you know hard hard to get to or you know re responding to um, global global emergencies where where we can um, you know try and rebuild buildings um, or or you know build buildings to to respond to to emergencies very quick. So you know rather than having to haul materials over you know we can we can maybe take um take the 3d printers and, and build buildings um there so yeah i, I don't know that this that the sky is or isn't the limit i guess it's um yeah i've got no no, no idea yeah. fantastic so maybe i could have a house under the sea in the future you never know yeah why not <laughs> All right, so that is us just about at the end of our session, but we do have one more slide. Just have a look at with some more information. So if you are still curious about construction innovation, eh, you can head over to goconstruct.org or My World of Work and have a look at the construction section over there. Eh, we also have further support from the STEM Futures team here at Glasgow Science Centre. We can do work readiness workshops with our friends here from more... Eh, Morrison Construction. Uh, we can get you involved in work experience and also point you in the direction of foundation apprenticeships from different partners like yourselves. So if you're interested, speak to your teacher and get them to give us a contact or email on that email address there, stemfuturesbookings at gsc.org.uk. And if you're interested in what Sam was saying earlier about apprenticeships, there's three types of apprenticeship that you could get involved in. Firstly, the foundation apprenticeships, which you can do whilst you're still at school, so that is in high school, and um, that'll take up one of the slots in your timetable once you are in senior phase. After you leave school, you can do modern apprenticeships where you learn on the job and you would get paid for that, as well as graduate apprenticeships where you can earn your degree whilst you are working in the construction industry and getting that all important industry experience. So if you're interested in any of those types of apprenticeships head on over to apprenticeships.scot um, and the last thing we have is if you could please fill out our short questionnaire we're going to put the link to that in the chat box we really value your feedback and it helps us to continue to do more events like this in the future and make them an awful lot better um, but last thing I have to say is thank you so much for a uh, for Alan and Sam for coming in and talking to us today. And if anyone has any questions after the fact, send them over on YouTube or Twitter uh, and we will pass them on to the guys. And I'm sure that they'll come up with a very, very uh, well-constructed answer because they're very good at construction. Uh, so that's all I've got for you. Sorry for the bad joke. Um, so that is all from us today. Thank you very, very much for watching and have a a fantastic rest of your day stick around for any of our other sessions if you fancy as well all right so thank you very much and bye-bye thank you bye-bye thanks